Hello. Hey, welcome to Outside the Comfort Zone, where we talk about things we probably should not be talking about. We shouldn't. No. Let's stop. But we, okay. Okay. Just kidding. Jokes. We're oh, funny no, here. I was ready to stop. We have a good time here. Okay. I need to, so. I need to figure out like a. A way to sit? I need, uh, yeah, I need to figure out like a Is a that a good way to sit? No. Okay. I'm just going to. I'm just gonna sit like this. Just maybe a little bit like, like this. Like just maybe like this. Yeah. I think this is good. That's good. This is kind of. Like, I think it's, that's it's, good. it's it's awkward enough that it's normal. That it's good. Yeah. I'm just slouched so far forward. Um, so, okay, what happened this week with you? Well, let me just bring up. I got some. I sent an, uh, myself an email. Okay. About what to talk about because I okay. thought about some stuff today. While you're doing that, I will tell the story of how last night the RCMP called my house at two thirty in the morning. Oh yeah, why they do that? So. It was a blocked number, like a completely blocked. And I answer and I'm like, hello. And they're like, uh, uh, hello. Uh, hello. <laughs> I was still completely awake. But like, I was pissed that they were calling at 2.30 in the morning. And they're like, yeah, is, uh, is Jesse Hackman there? And I was like, oh shit, what do you do? <laughs> like, no, who is this? They're like, this is the RCMP in Edmonton. And uh, we're just looking for Jesse Hackman. Does he live there? And I was like, no, he doesn't. What, is he okay? They're like, <laughs> Well, we found a vehicle that's registered to him, abandoned in Sherwood Park. Does he have a truck? And I was like, yeah. What <laughs> happened to his truck? He's like, is it an 89 truck? I'm like, I, I don't I don't know. I don't think so. Maybe he sold that one. I don't know if his new one's an 89 or not. Yeah. And he's like, well, it's abandoned here, and we just wanted to call before we tow it. And I was like, is this a prank call? You realize it's 2.30 in the morning, right? And they're like, ma'am, this is the RCMP. <laughs> okay. I need... Who, who's Jesse to you? And I'm like, he's, he's my brother. <laughs> like, we need his phone number right now. And I was like, this could be a bunch of serial killers trying to kill Jesse. And I'm just sitting here like, oh, <clears throat> sorry, of course. Uh, his phone number <laughs> is, oh, so sorry. <laughs> so anyways, uh, still haven't heard from Jesse. He might be dead. Wait, so you just gave him his phone number? Yeah. And then I went back to bed and I was like, he'll deal with that. Have you heard from Jesse at all? I, uh, no. Have you called him <laughs> no. to see if he's dead or not? <laughs> What? No. No. Did you like call him after it happened? No, it was 2.30. I told them not to call him either. I'm like, you realize that it's 2.30 and most people are sleeping, right? He gets up at four in the morning and they're like, well, we just wanted to call before we tow. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure yeah. he sold that. Like, just tow it. I'm pretty sure. Like, I mean, I'm pretty sure he doesn't have an 89. Truck. Yeah. His new one is like nicer than a 1989. So I think he's fine. He sold an old truck. Either that or you got his tuck, truck towed and he has to pay like 600 bucks to get out of the impound because of you. Well, don't interrupt my sleep. That's <laughs> what we've learned here today. Or he's dead. Or he's dead. Maybe I'll call him. Yeah, maybe you should call him and figure that one out. All right, you know what? I'll call him right now. You just finished your conversation and I'll say, hey, Jesse, you alive? Great. Okay, well, I mean, what, what do you mean my conversation? This was your conversation. I didn't have... I mean, I could talk about things, but I kind of wanted it to be like a, you know, like we're talking about things together, oh, you know, okay. like a podcast. Okay, let's we're... just see if he answers, and if he answers, I'll hang up right away. Okay. It's ringing. It's ringing right now. It's not actually. It's. it's I want to see if he's dead? dead or not. Yeah, I'm kind of worried about him. Oh, God, what if he's dead? Yeah. Hey, you're alive, right? No. Okay. Oh, no. Uh, did you get a call about your truck last night? No. Really? Really? The RCMP didn't call you? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, I feel, oh, last night I was asleep and I got a voicemail, but I deleted it before I could hear it. That was probably what you guys were prank calling me about, right? No, we didn't prank call you. No, they're, they literally, <laughs> the RCMP called the house last night and they're like, yeah, we have Jesse Hackman's truck in Sherwood Park or something and it's just abandoned here. Nope, I'm driving it. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty then. Hey, what, did you sell an 89? What? Did the truck you, did you, have you sold an 89? I did, why? That's yeah. probably it. So it's still registered to you. Yeah, so there's a, there's, a, there's a truck abandoned and they were like, yeah, we're towing it and it's still registered to you, so that's why they called you. Oh, well, I can see it. It's only worth like 100 bucks. <laughs> All right, All yeah. Right. It'll take more than that to get out of the impound, so. Just just wanted to make sure you were alive. Um, I feel like you're doing you now and you're just trying to prank call me now. No, we're, we're calling you to make am sure I, that you're am alive. I, am I pretty accurate there, though? Yeah, no, it was pretty accurate. Yeah, okay. I'm pretty smart sometimes when I don't try to be. 
okay. I, I str- I'm not a... Okay. Bye. Wait, wait. Oh. Wait, wait. Wait, my, uh, my Instagram is just... <laughs> <laughs> Shut, the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Um... Oh, my God. Okay, so he's alive. Yeah, he's and alive. And he thinks that we're making that up. Yeah, but we're not. Yeah. That did happen. I all don't right. actually have any proof because the number was blocked, but, uh, for all I know, it was one of his asshole friends. Yeah, could have been. So, whatever. Fuck him. All right, well, uh, I have something that happened to me. What happened to you? So, right now. Right now. This time that this podcast comes out, I'm in Mexico. I know. What the fuck? I'm sitting on the beach, uh, hammered. Sitting, uh, sitting a? Sitting a margarita. I'm sitting on the beach. You're sitting on a margarita. Uh, and I'm hammered. Are you going to eat all of the ice cream? Uh, no. Okay. Probably a lot of food, though. Like, okay. I'll be eating bacon. Oh. Uh, and I'll be eating, like, tequila. Eating tequila and Lots bacon. of tequila. You could soak the bacon in the tequila. Oh. Uh, and then drink the tequila, and I can have bacon tequila. Yeah. And tequila bacon. Oh. Um. So, yeah, I'm in Mexico right now. How are you liking great. it? Oh, it's good. I mean, it's hot. It's, like, 27. Um. Jesus. And it's way better than... Uh, but also... Uh, I don't know if I have a job when I get home. Yeah. So there's an issue. But you know what? Fuck it. I'm in Mexico and it's all inclusive and I'm drinking tequila. So, you know, make sure that you subscribe to Outside the Comfort Zone and you share this with all of your friends because this is really all Justin has to live for now. Yeah, this is really it. After Mexico. Um, so that's why uh, I'm in his website. Mm-hmm. So that we can, like, you know, go on there and blog and blog and, and stuff like that. Do shits and gigs and shit. Yeah. And gigs. So go check it out. Yeah. It's otcz.webs.com. Check it out. Check it out. It looks soups cool. Like soups cool. Like soups cool. Um, also, have you seen recently, have you seen any videos that ISIS have put on the internet? No. Okay, you should watch them. Aren't they like beheading people? No. Well, sometimes. Okay. But like lots of them are just like propaganda. Like we're going to strike again. Stuff like that. Yeah. So like one just came out today or yesterday. That was, which is January 25th, 2016, um, which is like, yeah, we did this thing in Paris and you remember that thing that we did in Paris and it's like all of these, these like news clips and like news reporters and like different pictures from like what happened and it's like the next thing we're going to do is in, is in the UK and they like, yeah. So then, but, but what I wanted to talk about, mm-hmm. these videos are like edited and produced really well. Like, it's really good editing, and, like, the production value of it's really good. And I'm thinking, like, I was expecting it to be, like, some, like, weird choppy cuts and then yeah. just have, like, some, like, terrible audio over time. But it's, like, really well done. And I'm like, okay, like, obviously they have some sort of, like, they have money. But, like, who do they hire? I, okay, I thought it was either going to go that way or, like, so I was wondering if I could get hired by ISIS to make videos for them after I don't have a job when I get back from Well, Mexico. no, I don't know if I would think that low, but... <laughs> Maybe. But like, yeah, that's true. Where the fuck do they find the Yeah, people? where do they hire? Like, do they just go on Craigslist? <laughs> They're like, hi, ISIS, looking for a video editor. Oh, my God. Somebody to make propaganda. Like, I don't, like, or they were just, like, they're, like, in one of their, like, mil- like military things, and they're just like, hey, does anybody in here know how to use Avid editing software? <laughs> they're like, we have a Mac in the back. It's, uh, we have, like, a, a sound recording studio. <laughs> Where people are like, yes. Yeah, yeah, I know how to do that. Out of bomb training today, yes. Yeah. They're like, I just did my, uh, my, my suicide bombing training, but yep. now I can go and edit your video. Yeah, perfect. Like, I don't understand that. I don't understand anything about ISIS. Me neither, but, like, that's the thing that boggles me the most. <laughs> that's the thing. Yeah. So, you guys should go watch them, though. You go to heavy.com, there's tons on there. Ugh. I and, don't know. uh. I don't know, just like the video production quality of them is really good. I mean, they're terrible videos, obviously, because they're like killing people and stuff. But um, yeah, I was just wondering like how the logistics of that would work. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like. Like, but then the thing also is like, how do you recruit anyone? Like, I that, can't that, imagine anyone. Well, it's, they, they recruit people with religion. With religion, but also like people who are dejected from society, right? Yeah. But how do you get so separated Because I know kids who've been bullied and who have depression and feel like they're alone, but at the same time, they're not going to go join a terrorist organization. How do you know? Because I know. (laughs) There was that kid from Beaumont that go to try and join Al-Qaeda. Did that happen? Yeah, he was 17 years old. Jesus. And they caught him going across the border. They're like, where are you going? He's like, I'm going to join Al-Qaeda. And then they're like, no, and then arrested him. 
He's like, this is a thing I'm doing, and I'm admitting it to you, and yeah. you should let me go anyways. Goddamn. Um, I just, yeah, I don't know what kind of state of mind you ever have to be in to be like, what I'm going to do with the rest of my life is kill a bunch of people and then probably kill myself. Well, I don't, yeah, I don't know. Like, and why is it worth dying for? Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. I don't know. Like, I don't know much more about the subject to go further than, like, it's dumb, why are people doing this? But it's dumb, I mean, dumb, it is dumb, and why are people doing, doing it? Yeah. I don't know. Wanted to bring that up, because it tickled my brain. It tickled your brain. Also. Yeah. Uh, want to talk about a couple TV shows. Okay. That I've been watching. Which, are you done? So, since Sons of Anarchy ended. Yes. I've been trying to fill this void in my life. Yeah. And I can't. So, I'm trying to fill it with different shows. Okay. Um... I started watching, have you seen on Netflix, a show called Zoo? No. It looks really good. It's new on Netflix. They only have one season. And I guess CBS did it. But it's a show about um, uh, animals start turning against humans. <gasps> oh, yeah. I saw previews of that. Yeah. It's fucking insane. It's really okay. good. I watched the first two episodes with Jamie, and we were both like, oh, like, it's fucking crazy. Okay, I'm going to watch that. You have to watch it. There's only 13 episodes because there's only one season up right That's now. That's easy to do. But they renewed it for a second season, and it looks, and it's, like, fucking awesome. Perfect. So okay. I'm probably going to crush that this week before I go to Mexico. Good. Uh, because it's it's fucking awesome. So go watch Zoo. It's on Netflix. Go do it. Um, and it, like, yeah, it gets fucking crazy. Like, it makes you scared of animals. Like, even just, like, cats and dogs and shit. Like, they go fucking insane. Oh. Yeah, like it's nuts. Poor little pups. Buddy would never hurt me though, so we're fine. Yeah, no, he already tried to eat my ear, so I yeah, wouldn't. but it's not far fetched for him. Me, so you know what? Um, I mean. and then I need, you, know, you always need like a sitcom to watch, yeah. like when you're kind of like in the mood to like not really like get really into like a drama. Yeah. So like, uh, I was watching Modern Family for the longest time. Oh my god. Because it's so fucking good. It's good. It's so funny. Finished every episode that's out right oh now. Oh my god. It's season six, episode ten. Isn't Haley? Is that the older girl? Yeah. Is she in college now? Yeah. Okay. Well. Should I spoil it or sure. what? Yeah, she was in college, but then she got kicked out after like a week. Oh no! Yeah, get back in. But there. Alex is in college now. What? Yeah, they grow up fast. Luke has his license. What? Yeah. God damn. So Phil is actually me. Yeah. And then Luke is gonna be my son. Okay. And that's just how we're gonna live. Okay. Um. Anyways, uh, so I was trying to fill my sitcom void because I went from like. Uh, I went from Friends, was a long time ago, and then I started watching Two and a Half Men, and I was like, meh. Yeah. And then Big Bang Theory, for like the first three seasons, it was good, and then it turned into like, oh, the same jokes. So then I stopped watching that. And then uh, uh, How I Met Your Mother, fucking amazing. Oh, so good. So Last cru- episode sucked. So I crushed that twice. Sucked. Twice? Yeah. And then um, did Modern Family, uh, tried The Office, couldn't really get into no, it. No, I can't get into it either. I really try. Like, I watched probably the first four or five episodes. It's funny. Yeah. I like watching an episode every once in a while, but I just can't, I can't do it. Have you crushed Community yet? Uh, yeah. Okay. Not the newest seasons. No. I probably crushed the first three. Okay. And then I stopped. Have you crushed Parks and Rec? No. It's great, but I found that it got way, way, way better after the second season. That's what people say. The first season is hard to get through. It's hard to get through because your characters are so much their traits. Like, she's so wacky that she's not a person until the second season. It's great. It's a great show. Okay, I'm going to watch it. Okay. That should be your next one. It's so good. People have been recommending Parks and Recreation, but I just, like, I I watched the first episode or two, and I was like, I can't do it no it's tough the first season's tough but then it gets way better it gets so much better okay i'm gonna watch it um Um, but anyways i started watching it's always sunny in philadelphia okay so funny yeah so funny charlie day is fucking amazing i like that once in a while like i have to be in a really specific mood for that yeah it's pretty funny i like it i mean it's not hooking me like lots do yeah it's funny but it's like a good turn off your brain and just kind of like watch it show yeah and every show is like super simple. Yeah, they like, have like super one thing to the that point. they want to do and they don't accomplish it ever. Yeah, <laughs> they are it's, very. It, dumb. it feels to me like watching Seinfeld. Okay. You're just watching it and nothing's happening, and then you're satisfied after. Yeah. Which I, it's hard to explain. Um, started watching Mr. Robot. What is that about? It is about a guy who is a hacker who works for a huge security company mm-hmm. that, like, helps them with their, like, cybersecurity and stuff like that. And then, like, these people contact him and they try and force him to work against and, like, hack the company that he's working for. Okay. This whole thing. Mitch told me it was fucking amazing. And it won the Golden Globe for Best right. Dramatic Series, right? Yeah. 
So then I started watching it, watched the first two episodes. I like it. So I have to keep watching it. Yeah. And Mitch told me it was really good, so I have to. Uh, finished the first season of The Art of More. No idea what that is. Really good. It's about the underground auction house scene. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah. good. So good. So watch that. Um, I saw The Big Short. Oh, my God. Do you ever not This watch is literally TV? my job. <laughs> okay, The Big Short is the banking one, right? Uh, yeah, well, it's like, yeah, like the mortgage crisis mm-hmm. of 2007. Um, really good. Brad Pitt, Steve Carell. Uh, Ryan, Ryan Gosling. Gosling. How could you forget the beautiful person? I'm sorry. Um, yeah, sorry. Steve Carell is really good in it. Brad Pitt has such a minor role. I don't know why he's in the trailer so much. <laughs> Perfect. And uh, Ryan Gosling is just Ryan Gosling. It looks like he has a fake face, though. Does it? Yeah. Because it's, like, ugly or... No, like, for the movie, they made him be, like, super tanned. And uh, like, like, looks like he had like plastic surgery and stuff because he was perfect. supposed to be like playing like a like a Wall Street um, rich guy. Um, so yeah, I watched that and it was really good. You watched a lot of shit. All I've been watching yeah. is Grey's Anatomy, but I'm on season seven, episode thirteen right now, and I started a month ago. And each is one it is a like soap opera? Twenty-five. No, it's a soap opera. Like it's like Days it's... of Our Lives crossed with ER. Mm, it's more ER. I don't like ER. Yeah, it's. I mean, I like medical shows, and I, I, I watched it all the way through last year already, and I just, I love it. Medical shows make me want to throw up because <laughs> they're so bad, not because of the gross stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and also, oh my God, this is not going to be relevant by the time this goes up anymore because everyone will have seen it. But Chelsea does amazing. Chelsea Handler, I, I crushed it all in one day. Like, well, in, oh, and in I finished five making hours. the murderer, but I'll talk about that after. Okay. It's, it's so good. Chelsea Handler is this amazing comedian, and she doesn't take anything seriously, like anything. And it's absolutely amazing because she takes her, like, just chill viewpoint into really serious subjects. And she, like, it, it's just so good. You have to watch it. It'll it's take you Char- five hours. Chelsea does? Chelsea does on Netflix. It's like a, a docu-series, but it's, it's not one of those boring documentaries that you're just like, I just have to get through this. This is so dumb, but I'm learning, sort of. It's no like, documentary is boring to me. Some of them are. No, they're amazing. This is su- something that's just going to completely hold your attention. It's so good. It's so funny. I'm obsessed with it. And the last episode with the drugs, oh my god. I want to try that so bad. Okay. okay. I'm, I'm going to watch it. Watch it. It's amazing. You can I'll crush it, it tonight. I probably won't. <laughs> Let's be honest. But you could. But I could. Okay. Uh, maybe I will. So Making a Murderer, I haven't seen it yet. Oh my god, watch it. Why haven't you? What's I, wrong with you? I know what it's about and I know everyone's reaction and I don't want to be that angry about it. Well, no, I'm not that angry about it. It just makes you think so much because you don't know. Yeah. By the end of it, everyone's like, oh my god, he's innocent. But then you start thinking about it and you're like, what if he's not? Mm-hmm. And like it, it fucks with you. So you, you got to watch it. I might. The whole, like, the way, the way it all works, like, and, like, the way it's, it's, it's made over, like, it was made over 10 years. Oh, my God. Which is really cool. That's crazy. And they used stock footage from, like, the 80s, and they shot, and they finished it in 2015. Oh, my God. And, like, the whole, I don't know, it's just really fucking cool. It was two chicks that made it, and, uh, yeah, just the way it's, like, done is really cool. And then I think when Netflix picked it up, they kind of went back and reshot a couple things. Yeah. To make it look, like, you know, Netflixy and prettier. Um, but it's really cool. It's like super, lots of like legal stuff about like evidence and like police tampering evidence and like mm. it's just really cool. God, like, and then you can understand all the memes online. <laughs> How absolutely amazed do you think they feel to have like such success come to this thing? Oh yeah, that, like, that's huge. I mean, the story, the story is good enough. Yeah. That it would have been successful no matter what, but Netflix grabbed it and made it a Netflix original. Yeah. Um, which means they just threw money at it. And call the Netflix original, but um, I think yeah, the story is cool enough that that's why it exploded. Good, because it's just such a good story. Maybe I'll watch that. I'll watch that one. I'm feeling like like do you have to be in a certain mood to watch it? No, no. Me and like me and Jamie it. just yeah, we just crushed it. Okay, all right, I can watch it. It's great. Yeah, it's 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 ten. It's a it's a series, so it's just ten, ten episodes. Okay, and they're like an hour. Yeah. Okay. Jesus, that's a you long. You can do that tonight. Fucking document. I can do that like all day tomorrow. Yeah, but you like you don't want it to end, because you're like, well, uh, what happens next? And then what happens? And then is he guilty? Whoa, what happened? What did the jury say? Oh my and you're god. like, oh my god. But you get answers, right? Like you get. You get answers, yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh god. It's just like, 
wow. <laughs> <laughs> so watch it. Just like wow. Just like wow. Okay. Um, are we done talking about TV? I think so. I feel like we took a long TV time there. Yeah. It's kind of I mean, nice I like though. TV. I we like movies. Shit to talk I about. like. I like stuff like that. So. Okay, I was listening to the Nerdist podcast with Chris Hardwick, and oh my god, amazing podcast, first of all. Yeah, I love the Nerdist. I was listening to the episode with Hannah Hart, and she brought up the um, love languages, the five languages of love. I think I've heard that one. How long has hers been out? Um, so I think it was filmed in August, maybe? Yeah, I think I, I think I listened to it. Yeah, I went back and I downloaded a bunch from people that I really like, so Hannah yeah. Hart was on there. And, okay, so... Love languages, there's five. And this, I've heard about it before, but it was never really explained to me. Yeah. So I was like, oh, that seems stupid. But basically, it's like you receive love best in these certain ways. So there's words of affirmation, which is like, I love you, you're doing well, I'm proud of you. Um, Acts of service, which is taking out the garbage. Uh, Receiving gifts, which is like, that's the one that kind of caught me off guard. I was like, okay, so that's fucking materialistic. But it's just like, oh, I thought of you today and I brought you a coffee. Yeah, it doesn't have to be like an expensive thing. No. But just like something that like, shows that you thought of them. Exactly, right? And then there's quality time and there's physical touch. And I took a test and I scored highest on acts of service, quality time, and then it was words, receiving gifts, and physical touch. Because apparently I'm not a fucking touchy person. No, you don't like touching people. I'm not a touchy person. So what were your top two? Um, there were... Quality time and acts of service. Quality time and acts of service. I'm pretty sure that most girls are quality time and acts of service. Because it's just, like, to me, if I'm stressed out and you take initiative and do something to lighten my load, that means so much to me. Yeah. Like, more than saying I love you or you're going to be fine. Like, just show me. Like, That's definitely help. how Jamie is. Like, if if she's, like, texts me at lunch and she's like, wow, I'm having a really fucking shitty day, I'm like, okay. So then I get home, make supper, clean up. So that when she gets home, she doesn't have to do anything. Mm. And she can just eat and then not have to worry about anything. No, it's so nice. Yeah. Yeah, no. Like, really, receiving gifts is a nice one, too, because the two nicest things that, that have ever been done for me that I can recall is, like, obviously someone flew into Canada to see me. And then also yeah. I was going well, through finals and... Someone, to have sex with you. To have sex with me. Yeah. And <laughs> so I was going through finals and someone bought me, like some tea because he thought I was stressed like they're both equally nice because they were both like I'm thinking of you and I want to be with you and I want you to relax and yeah like it, it doesn't have to be a large gesture they're nice but just like the fact that he saw that I was stressed out and he was like here's some tea and a cup like and a funny book like just go study and relax for a minute yeah like it's just I've never thought about it that way and it it makes so much more sense and me and Bronwyn were talking about it and we had this really really in-depth conversation about how like how do you like to be talked to when you're frustrated how do you like to you know be talked to when you're you're angry because a lot of people I'm a talky person like I want to help you through this I want to help you through what you're feeling but I don't want someone to talk at me when I'm annoyed I want them to listen because I'm going to talk myself through it you know what I mean yeah so like what do you so like when I'm when I'm mad uh I don't want to talk at all. Mm-hmm. And I don't want you to talk at all. So you just want it silence? I want it silent and I want to, I want to stew in it for a bit. And then... Do I'll, you like rationalize it in your head? Yeah, and then I drop it. Okay. And then you don't, you don't have to You don't have to say anything if I'm mad. Okay. Uh, Do you want to talk about it after or no? No. It's done. It's done. Okay. As soon as I drop it, it's done. I don't care anymore. Okay. So then is Jamie... I only get mad often. I I don't even know. I think I've been mad at Jamie maybe once in the last four years. Yeah. And it was literally for like 10 minutes and I was like, fuck it, I don't care. Yeah. But is she the kind of person that needs to talk about these things? Yeah. Okay. And like most girls are, I find. Yeah, she's definitely the kind of person where like, even if we have like a little argument, she, um, it has to be finished before she goes to sleep. Mm-hmm. Me, I'm just like, fuck it, I'm just gonna go to sleep, we'll figure it out in the morning. But she, it has to be done before yeah. she goes to sleep, which sometimes drives me nuts, but I like it because then we never wake up angry. Yeah. But sometimes I'm just like, I don't want to deal with it right now. Yeah. Like, I just want to go to sleep. But I think it works for the better because she's smarter than me. <laughs> so that's a good compromise. Yeah. Then. It's nice though that like you recognize what you need, but you also recognize that this is what she needs. So you'll make yeah. that, you know, consideration yeah. for her. Yeah, she is definitely um, acts of service and quality time. Yeah. And you are? 
I'm words of affirmation and physical touch. Okay. Yeah, guys are more touchy. It's not even like, like even just like holding my hand. Yeah. Or like touching my arm. Yeah. Like something like that will literally take me from like, fuck, I had such a shitty day. And then she could just come over or like, or like put her hand on my back or something. And then instantly I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm home. Why would I care about my day? Yeah. This is awesome. Yeah. Like instantly. I find that I am not like, I don't like to be touched, but I like to touch other people. Like when I'm with a guy, I'm not like a big hold me kind of person. I'm more like, I will rub your back or I'll give you a massage. Like it makes me a little bit uncomfortable. I'm not super into being touched all the time. Yeah. But I'm totally fine with like touching other people. That's weird. It is weird. That is weird. (laughs) But I just like, for me, because I think like my family's kind of touchy. Like my dad's very like touchy and huggy and like my mom's very huggy and it just, it's always been like imposed on me in this way where it's like, even when I'm mad and I'm uncomfortable and I don't want it, I'm like being hugged and I'm just like, I just don't want this right now. (laughs) But like with other people, I'm totally fine with if they need like, my family is like totally not touchy. Yeah. So you like to be touched. Yeah. Yeah. Like growing up, like the only time I hug my parents are after I move out. Now when I go and see them <laughs> or like if I'm, if I'm leaving, cause they know they're not going to see me for a while. Yeah. So they give me hugs, which I, I don't even know. Like probably the, like my mom hugs me. Um, like if I make her cry, like if I say something which nice you do all and the make time. her cry yeah. or like, or like if I'm, or if she's like leaving on a trip or something, but like my dad, I don't, I don't know if my dad ever hugged me mm-hmm. until I moved out. And then I came back for the first time after like a couple of weeks of moving out, came back, hung out with them for a bit. And then when I was leaving, they both hugged me Aww. and I was like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like that. Yeah. I like this. Cause I don't know. It's just, it's just, it's just something different. Cause I like, I was never hugged as a kid. Yeah. It's not like that I wasn't loved. I was super loved. It was just not a touchy family. Yeah. That's interesting, though, how, like, we had such different experiences, and now we're just, like, so opposite. Yeah. So, hey, yeah, what weird. are you? And then, I, I don't know why words of affirmation. Like, I feel like words of affirmation would be more for somebody who's insecure, but I'm not insecure. No, but it's still nice to, like... The, I feel like you're the kind of person where the people that you love, their opinion is in real high regard with you. And to know that they're proud of you, it's important. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. like, you have such a small, tight circle of people around you that, like, you want to know that they think highly of you in yeah. the same way that they you yeah. think highly of you. And them. I think uh, uh, professionally, too, mm-hmm. I need to be respected. Yeah, I can understand that. I don't know. I think, like, in quality time for me is just, it doesn't have to be, I think the definition here is, like, no phones, no TV, you're just together alone. And, like, for me, it's like, no, we can just, like, sit and be in the same space together. In the same space or in the same room. Yeah, that's the same with me and Jamie. Yeah. Because we'll, she'll be on her phone and I'll be watching TV or I'll be on my, I'll be on my tablet and she'll be, like, in the kitchen where she should be. JK. Women. Um, uh, and it's just, it's nice to be around each other. We're, uh... Oh, sorry. Yeah, we're, we're looking we're at... We're reading this you now that we're doing. Yeah, we're live streaming this podcast as we're recording it. Sometimes we do it. Someone called you a slut. What? Why? Rude. That's so mean. Ah, oh, so mean. Um, I had other things I wanted to talk about, and I can't remember what it is uh what kind of love are you (laughs) um it's just i've never looked at relationships in that way before i know and i explained it to jamie and she was like that makes so much sense it does it totally does because like and listen to the nerdist podcast with hannah hart because she explains it better than i do but just to be with someone and to think that they receive love the same way that you receive love, you could be totally miscommunicating yeah. and not even know it. And they could misinterpret something that you meant in a really positive way just as like you're totally blowing them off. Like it's yeah. crazy. And I think that that's a conversation I'm going to have with my friends and have with the people that are important to me in my life because 
Like, I remember some stupid fights that I've had with people that could have totally been solved by just knowing, like, I'm not a touchy person or, like, I don't want you to talk at me when I'm expressing my feelings. I want you to listen so I can walk through it myself. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. And, like, and like the way that, that uh, like, guy friends are, it's way different. Yeah. Like, you can talk to your friends about that. Like, I can... I feel like th- all the way through my life, uh, I didn't really have guy friends I could talk to about serious shit. Mm-hmm. Which I think a lot of guys feel that way. Like, the only friends that they can talk to about serious shit are girls. Yeah. So, like, I always had friends that were girls that I talked to about serious shit. But then now... I feel like the only friends I have that are guys, I can talk to about serious shit. Yeah. Like, I can talk to Mitch. I can talk to Ben. I can talk to Steven. Yeah. And it's just, like, I feel like that is what changes, like, after you graduate and after you, like, mature more. Like, as a guy, you never have those kind of conversations with your friends. Ever. It's always like, let's just hang out and do something. Like, let's just, like, it's never just, like, serious shit. Mm-hmm. And now it happens, which is kind of cool. It's just, I never understood what people meant by like, oh, things change after high school, but they do. They totally do. They totally do. Like, we're three years out. It's not like we're talking about 20 years ago. And so much has changed. Like, I don't even recognize myself from high school. Yeah, I don't know. I want a donut. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sitting here trying to talk about love languages, but in the back of my mind, All you I'm can like, think of is donuts. I just want to go get a donut. Uh, I really want to go home and have a beer. Beer. Beer would be good. Beer helps. Donut would be better. Hard, hard to say. <laughs> who Who really knows, knows who, who what knows? would be better? I want a chocolate donut with chocolate glaze on top. You know what I started doing recently? What? Reading. What are you reading? I am reading the second Maze Runner book. Okay. Is it good? Really good. And 100% different than the movie. Yeah? Like 100%. Like not even the same thing. Which is weird. Yeah, that is weird. Yeah, because I like the movies. And then I saw I saw the book, like a, like a PDF of the book. And I was like... Yeah, I wonder if it's the same as the movies. So then I started reading it, and then I got hooked because it was so good. And it's fucking not the same as the movies at all. Did you read the first book? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just started reading like, it. Well. I just started from the second. But I mean, I saw the first movie, and I saw the... But now I'm just like, maybe I should go back and read the first book, because maybe it's nothing like the movie. I didn't like the first book. Did you read the first book? I read, like, half of it, and I kept trying to get back into it, but I just couldn't. And did you watch the movie? No. Really? But I kind of want to, because the movie's really good. Cute. The movie's really good. And then the second movie is even better. Okay. And the second movie has nothing to do with the book. Yeah. Which is weird. That is weird. I don't like it when they do that. I mean, Game of Thrones is doing that, but which, oh, you need to start watching it. Lots of people it's okay. say that like, oh yeah, I read The Scorch Trials and it was really good. And then I watched the movie and it was 100% different, but it was still really good. Okay. So they're both good in their yeah. own way. So then I want to read this one and then I want to read The Death Cure, which is the third one. How many are there? Three. Okay. And then I and then I wanna and then I wanna watch the third movie. What's coming out this year, I think. Have you seen Divergent? Yes. And Insurgent? Yes. Is Insurgent good? Yes. Okay. Better than the first one. Really? Yeah. I'm gonna watch that tonight. Watch I need it. To fucking watch me. I keep watching Grey's Anatomy. I've already seen the entire yeah, thing. Yeah, watch new things. Brighten your horizon. <laughs> Brighten it. That's what I have to tell Jamie all the time. She's like, I'm going to watch Full House again. Or like something that she's already seen. And I'm like, <laughs> no. And then like, or if I'm like, yeah, we should watch this. And she's like, nah, I don't think it's good. I'm like, have you seen it? She's like, no. And I'm like, she's like, I don't like watching movies that I haven't seen before. And I'm like, <laughs> What? That makes no sense. It does though, because and why she'll watch like Finding Nemo forty times in a week, and I'm like, it's a good movie. I'm like, come on, yes, it is a good movie, but like once a, every Can two years. Can you imagine years. when Finding Dory comes out? I know, I'm gonna lose her fucking mind. She's probably seen Despicable Me three hundred and eighty times. That's a specific number. Yeah. Do you keep count? Yeah. Is there like a Jamie has watched wall in your apartment? Yeah. Okay. It's fucked, yeah. and I don't know. Like, I can't watch a movie unless I forget what happens in it. Unless it's like Fast and Furious, then it's just a classic. But. I could watch, what's that Leonardo DiCaprio one? 
where he goes into dreams or whatever. Oh, Inception? Yeah. I could watch that again because I don't remember what happens in it. Except yeah. for it doesn't fall down in the end. And that, oh. Do, have, you, have you ever had that ending explained to you? No. Do you want to have it explained to you? Yes. Okay, so he goes through all these dreams and shit, and you know how, like, the top, he spins the top, and if it if it keeps spinning, then he's in a dream. And if it falls down, then he knows it's reality. Mm -hmm. That's his, like, his thing. So then at the end, so the entire time he's trying to, he's trying to get through all these dreams and trying to get back so that he can see his kids, right? Because he keeps seeing his kids, but they never turn around and show their faces to him. Yeah. They're always just playing in the grass, and he always looks, sees them, and then they always slip away, and he never actually gets to see their faces. Um, so then he goes through all these dreams and everything... And then at the end, he doesn't know if he's in a dream or not because he sees his kids outside and he spins the top to see. And then the camera sh goes to the top and it shows it spinning. And then uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, the whole point of the movie is that he doesn't even stand there to watch yeah. if it falls or not. He just walks towards his kids. They turn around and come oh. to him. So it's it's all about like it doesn't matter. He he's given up like because he had this obsession yeah. with knowing whether or not he's in a dream or not. But then after he saw his kids and they turned around and saw and he saw their faces, he didn't care anymore. He just wanted to be with his kids and he didn't care if it was a dream or not. This is where he was going to live. Okay. Yeah. So that's why they made it that way. I hate it. <laughs> that was that was Christopher Nolan explaining it. I hate it. Yeah. I get it, but I hate it. <laughs> Christopher Nolan is a genius. Oh. Like that and like Interstellar and like, and like just fucking, and like Batman. You're like going at it in my couch right now. <laughs> He's yeah. like shoving his hand yeah. in between the couch cushions. Okay, I need to go home. Okay, yeah, we are going to end this now. I'm going to really quickly, um... Find the patron list. Yeah, yeah, find it, and uh, we'll we'll just, we'll just thank the people that are supporting us. And which uh, guys, we so appreciate. We will continue to support them by telling them how amazing they are. Oh, and what is it? Next week? No, this Friday there is a um, Tinder takeover thing coming up. So yeah, go watch that. Look forward to that. It's ridiculous. Ridiculous. Like ridiculous. It's like ridiculous. It's ridiculous. So, hey, thanks to our patrons. These are the people who support us on Patreon. And by supporting us financially, you get rewards like Skype calls and cool little nicknames. So we wanted to thank Caitlin Fletcher. We wanted to thank Sarah Moore, whose Facebook page is Natural Edge Art Therapy. Fuck, I keep fucking that up. I'm sorry, Sarah. Natural Edge Art Circle. Art Circle. <laughs> art Circle. Johanna Johnson and Melly the Kitten on you, not YouTube. Oh, my God. I'm so oh my, sorry. What guys. is wrong with you? I'm sorry. On Instagram and Twitter. So thanks so much for watching. We all love you so, so, so much. And uh, we'll see you next Wednesday. And oh my God, please go to the podcast on iTunes and rate it. And then we'll follow you on Twitter. It just helps. So thank you guys. Okay, bye. Bye.